a big hit at TIFF this year and now finally dropping on Netflix, Azazel Jacobs' latest, His Three Daughters. Yes, this is on Netflix now, so you can watch it from the comfort of your own couch, which seems like a fitting place to watch this movie, <laughs> because pretty much the entire thing takes place in this apartment on the Lower East Side. Yeah. Um, and there's this incredibly rich sense of place, even though they barely leave the confines of these couple of rooms and this hallway and this kitchen. But you have to get a feel for this place and these people and the lives that have been lived in there. You know, she hasn't done a shift, right? Oh, yeah. You don't find that strange? Once we get here, she steps back from all responsibility. Responsibility. Your life is perfect. You got your kid. Probably gonna pop out a bunch more. So Carrie Coon, Elizabeth Olsen, and Natasha Leone play sisters who have converged on this kind of modest apartment in this giant co-op on the Lower East Side because their father is dying. And he is down at the end of the hallway in the bedroom. You hear the constant beeping of the machinery, um, people from hospice come and go and try to be helpful. And they're just in that really sad kind of liminal state of just waiting and just wanting to take care of him, um, but also trying to maintain their own lives. It's clear from the very beginning that they aren't all that close and that they have been estranged. And um, we figure out pretty early, very distinctly, who each of these three women is. Carrie Coon is Katie. Um, she is the eldest. And she gives this dynamite monologue from the very beginning that very much sets the tone for who she is and what this movie is going to be like. Um, and then Elizabeth Olsen is sweeter and more conciliatory and more accommodating. And then Natasha Leone, who has been, her name is, well, Elizabeth Olsen's character is Christina. Right. Natasha Leone's character is Rachel. And yes. she has been living in this apartment with their father all this time and caring for him up until then. And her days consist of just getting high, like lighting a blunt after another, after another, and gambling and watching sports on TV and maybe going down the street to the convenience store to place a bet or something or whatever. Um, and so it's how they learn to coexist at the end of their father's existence. And it's, it feels like a play. It's very Chekhovian yeah. in a mm -hmm. lot of ways, um, but also incredibly modern day and feels immediate and doesn't feel dated. But um, Azazel Jacobs finds enough ways into this space, whether it's a different camera angle on a room we spent a lot of time in, or just how he will frame just a couple of them or one of them to indicate some isolation. We see bits of what that view is like at the living room window. And so it gives us enough variety of perspectives on this place and on their day-to-day -day trudgery of just like waiting and watching and trying to keep them comfortable that it never feels stale. He makes a choice in the third act that totally took me out of it. And I, I think it was a mistake and I was really, really with it until then because all three of them are drawn so distinctly and they act so beautifully opposite each other. And we're constantly learning about them. We think we know who they are. We think we have them pegged mm -hmm. and then the way they'll interact with each other or somebody else will inform us further and they become richer and, and more complicated in more interesting ways. And there's a tension that steadily percolates as they are going stir crazy in this confined space. So I really loved it for a long time. And then there's a choice that I think it was a mistake and took me out of it. That won't be the case for everyone, but um, it kind of held me in its spell until then. I didn't object to the choice as much, but it had kind of lost me earlier mm. uh, because I think this is a movie about these wonderfully complicated sisters and their relationships to each other and to their father that are all different. Um, and then the movie periodically stops and explains things to you in a very blunt force kind of way, like mm. uh, Rachel's uh, boyfriend, question mark, friend who comes and hangs out has this scene with the other two sisters that's very explanatory. Um, and I felt like the, the movie had been doing a good job of letting us glean and, and intuit and understand things about them up to that point. And then, it, and that just to me felt like, let me break this down for you. Like I thought he was just going to bring me, you might as well have a chart on the wall, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so that was where I felt like the, the, the Jacobs kind of loses his confidence in the way that he's telling this story. So by the time we get to the choice at the end, I thought that was a, an interesting idea. And, and for the most part, I thought that the way it's resolved, I was okay with it. But okay. by that point, 
I was a little out of it, despite the fact these actresses are like working overtime. They are putting it all in there. Carrie Coon's performance, I think, is going to be divisive because her initial monologue that you talk about, the first thing I thought of, did you ever watch Gilmore Girls? No. She is doing full on Paris Geller at the like <laughs> everything very blunt and da da and then and then and then listening at the thing and it's almost like it's like there are people like that and there are people who behave like that but it's also the kind of thing that's so on the verge of caricature of like a type A monster that it's hard to play in a sort of human space especially with the relate with the character with the the performances the other two are giving and the kind of characters they're playing. I still think it works, but it works in a very theatrically stagey kind of way. And it's still fun to watch because it's Carrie Coon. Because she's, she's amazing so, always. She's so yeah. good at this. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see her, even if she's doing, even if it's artificial, you just want to be in the room where it happens, where she's doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if this movie quite ever lives up to what it could have been. Uh, I I think the, the, the I think their, their last name is Lear, which isn't really mentioned much, but that's the other famous Three oh. Sisters play. Um yeah, I, I I admire this movie and I like it, but I don't think it quite nails its ambitions. But it does have ambitions, which is more than we can say for a lot of films. So I'll give it that. Yeah, I mean, Carrie Coon, I bought that character and that monologue and the whole performance because as you get to know her, you realize where that drive for control comes from and sure. you see how it reveals itself in other aspects of her life and her family in Brooklyn. So like, I, I believe that, I mean, I'm an only child. My mom's an only child. My son's an only child. So I don't know about like sibling dynamics, but one thing that <laughs> seemed to get right, maybe you can speak to this is like, they hadn't seen each other for a while. They're not close clearly, but like when they get back in that room, they are who they always were. And like those, like those hierarchies and those dynamics and those resentments are all still there is that something that seems realistic to you yeah i mean the more time you spend with that character the more human she she becomes and the more relatable she becomes and yeah definitely there is a thing i mean like my family is pretty functional and 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 i think we 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 get along well and we don't like carry a lot of secrets and resentments but there is absolutely a a, a resumption of role that happens mm -hmm. when we get together you know and, and i think certainly in family crises like this um which I, I i went through this more with my mom i was living somewhere else when my father died and wasn't there physically when it at the last parts of it um but you know it definitely it, it, everything is fraught and everything is tense and everybody's nerves are on edge and so yeah. the movie captures that part of it pretty well but i just i i, I think that you know, I, I, the, it's a thing lately I'm seeing in movies that makes me crazy. We didn't really get into it when we talked about the substance, but like there's a moment toward the end of the film where they bring back lines from earlier in the movie just to make sure that you know what they were about and what mm -hmm. they meant and what the context is. And it's like, I, I got it, movie. J just don't tell me less. Tell me less, <laughs> show me more, and let me do the work as a viewer to like get these emotional insights. And I'm usually totally with you on that. But like the thing with the boyfriend, I uh -huh. thought was useful because it breathed life into this like morass of the three of them all being stuck being themselves. And also mm -hmm. she's not given to a whole lot of effusive emotion, that character, the Natasha Leone character. So True. for him to come in there and get mad on her behalf kind of helped explain her anyway i was okay with it but they all drink a lot of coffee they stay <laughs> up late they drink coffee and imagine how much better they would communicate and how much more they'd bond and open up to each other if they had coffee brothers coffee our right? friends at coffee bros these sisters need the coffee bros um <laughs> this is the honduras the katia juke which is totally strange and cool which i'm enjoying with toffee and chocolate and mm -hmm. i'm loving the kenya pea berry which nice. is these cute little tiny bitty beans they're so sweet um but they've got a new one i've got to tell you about if you're feeling experimental it tastes like fruit loops it's called Ooh. fruit loops it's from colombia it's a light roast it tastes like Fruit Loops, and you can get 20% off on it with the code <laughs> Fruit Loops in all caps. Um, they were getting low last I looked, so go take a look. We've got a, a link through the, the comments down below here, so go check that out. Um, but if you're feeling adventurous, they've always got some cool new roast with some fun flavor. It's, they, I mean, the espresso is great. All their traditional roasts are great, but 
they they play around at the coffee break. Holiday season's coming. It is indeed. I love their holiday blend. That stuff's yeah. awesome. So um so go check out your coffee bros coffee. Um what is your number on his three daughters? Say a seven. I think it's pretty strong and I, I liked it quite a bit, but I just I, I think it doesn't it, it doesn't quite get across to a level of greatness that it might have. I will say an eight, not like a seven point eight. Okay. Because I, I liked it for a long time. The sense of place, the costume design, the production design, mm. like it feels very lived in. It feels very New York. Sure. Um, and uh, I thought it was great for a long time. And then makes this change. I did not like. But it's really worth watching. If you want to watch three tremendous performances. Oh, for three sure. Of the best actresses working today. Check out his three daughters.